Hey guys, this is Scott. In this video, I want to show you an awesome 12 bar blues by the great Buddy Guy, and we're going to do it using a little flamenco guitar slap technique. So Mary Had a Little Lamb, no, not that Mary Had a Little Lamb. This one from Buddy Guy and Stevie Ray Vaughan also recorded that and many others. This is a great example of a 12 bar blues, which means a 12 measure blues. The pattern is totally familiar to us probably. It's in tons of blues and rock and rockabilly songs and surf music too. And it's a great template for learning the blues and you can actually use this song for a lot of cool little improvisation exercises. Every little riff that's happening there, you could improvise it and vary it your own way. And that's a great exercise for doing that because you've clearly got a little riff and then a chord. And you can alter that riff and do variations in a bunch of ways and it just kind of is asking for us to do that. But for now, we're just gonna learn the basic riff and chords of Mary Had Little Lamb. So let's check out the whole thing here with Tab and then talk about how to play it. Okay, for those of you playing nylon string like I am, we're gonna use just our fingers. You could totally do this with a pick, obviously, because that's how it's normally played. But first, we wanna get down this little slap thing that I was talking about at the beginning. You know, if you played flamenco or nylon string Latin stuff in general, you might pl have played a Roomba before where you do something like this. This is how the Gypsy Kings might play a Roomba very often. So it's this little palm slap where we're going like this. We're not using our wrist so much as our entire arm, not going out this far, but a little bit out like this and then just slap it in. That's what we're doing here for that percussive whack on the third and fourth beats. So before you do anything, I would get this slap pattern down first and you don't even have to have a chord down. We're gonna go like this, our thumb on the first beat and then we're gonna strum down with any finger that you want. One, two, I'm using my index finger. One, two, now come up with your thumb. And that's a quick note, it's a 16th note there, and we're gonna immediately slap. So what happens in this flamenco rumba stuff that I was talking about is we're gonna almost always do a thumb upstroke just before a slap, and then after a slap, do an index finger upstroke because they just kind of blend into each other and they like just physically feel better that way. So we're gonna go down with a thumb, down with the index, or your thumb if you want, up with a thumb, slap, and then upstroke, slap again, upstroke. So that's the whole pattern. We're going one, two, a three, and four, and one, two, a three, and four, and. So if you have played a Roomba before, this is actually a little bit weirder because we have a dotted eighth note, which is worth three sixteenth notes, and then a really quick sixteenth note on the end, which we kind of normally don't see that in a Roomba. We might go one, two, three, or one, two, and three, and four, and so see, that's like a binary thing, either it's a quarter note or an eighth note. But here we have to drag the second beat out a little longer and then play just before the third beat. One, two, a three. So that's tricky. One, two, E, and a three, and four, and one, two, a three, and four, and. So let's try that just with the chords of this song. So we got an E7, however you want to play it. I'm playing it, adding the pinky here. Then we're going to go to A7, my pinky on top. You don't have to do that. And back to E again. And then we've got a B7, and then an A7, and then back to E7. So let's try that whole 12 bar blues pattern with this slap rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, a three and four and one. We've got four measures of E here. Two, three, four, one, two, now A7. Gotta hit the A string with a thumb. And we're back to E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and B7. Two, three, four, A7. And we're back to E again. Break right there with what we call a turnaround or that little riff which functions as a turnaround in this song. So now let's look at the riff. What's happening riff wise in Mary Had Little Lamb is this little minor pentatonic uh, scale which he's playing at the end and that lick at the end and these, all these little riffs except for one little spot um, is an E minor pentatonic scale. So if you know that scale um, you can really start to do your own thing over this but here's the riff. At the end we did a slight little bend uh, I don't have to do that. I'm cramming two fingers within the same fret. Just give it a little bit of a shake there. That's the whole riff. That's going to happen a couple times. 
and then that last note of the riff is actually the beginning of that rhythm slap pattern that we just did so be mindful of that this whole riff by the way starts on the and of one so make sure that when you start it at home you don't you don't aren't inadvertently thinking of that first note of the riff as being a downbeat for example if you tapped your foot right there you it would be wrong right so we would go one and two and three and four and one there's the beginning that's the end of the riff but the beginning of the thing that we just did so and two and three and four and one two three four now here we have a shortened abbreviated little riff here this is kind of hard got to jump up there and play that e note and then that is also the first beat of the measure we jump right back into the pattern right Now here, he doesn't use the E minor pentatonic scale. He's playing kind of like the A major pentatonic because we have an A major chord coming up there. So these notes are consistent with that. Uh, anyway, but we're going to the second fret of the fifth string, fourth fret, go to the next string, same thing. Landing on that A. And then we're back. That was the first riff, kind of. Now we have landing on B, and that's handy because we need to play B7. Now here, at this point in the song, there's this great little riff, and of course you can vary it however you want. Now this is where the A7 comes in, but we don't have time to play A7, except for the root of the chord at the very beginning. So from B7, we have... We're trying to hit A. Now if you let it ring out, see it's still ringing out. It, it is a measure of A, but it kind of undermines the, the melody if you let it ring out. You want to hear that great little riff and really make it stand out. So what I said in the tab is you're going to sit your thumb or your pick, if you're playing with a pick, on the fifth string right after you play it so we can really hear that lick coming up and only that lick. So I'm going thumb, sit on it, and then start this thing. Now here we're getting a little bit of a bend. That's a very bluesy thing, right? See, I'm cramming these two fingers in within the fret. So it's kind of easier to do a bend. It doesn't have to be much of a bend, just a quarter bend, which is just moving the string a tiny bit. And then I'm using my ring finger to play this next string, pull it off. Okay, and now make sure on this next part, this is a very quick slide, but your middle finger should do it. We go up to the fourth fret, and then your index plays the next string right here. Um, and that's where your index finger already was. And then come back, I took my middle finger away because I don't want to hear it anymore, and it might have muffled the string. And then I put it right back where it was and slide back exactly the same way. So those slides need to go blip really quick like that. So we're going and landing on E here, and then we go again right back into that rhythm. So that's really the whole thing here, that 12 bars, and everything is just extrapolations of that, these other recordings that you've heard of the song. At the end of the arrangement that we showed a minute ago, I'm playing this chord. At the end, a dominant seventh sharp nine chord. It's a real bluesy sounding thing. That's a typical thing to do at the end of a blues. Very cliched, but sounds cool. So this is definitely one of those blues standards to have in your arsenal. What we're doing here is a 12 bar blues, like I said, but if you listen to the recording of the original Buddy Guy or Stevie Ray Vaughan or some of the other ones, it becomes an eight bar blues when they start singing. For some reason, they chop off the first four measures, but you can just keep this pattern going. And like I said, it's very, very familiar in thousands of songs. And I think it's easier to comprehend that way. If you're not ready for that rhythm yet with the slap, of course you can play that rhythm however you want. We got One, two, that's a great way to get started on this. So however you play the rhythm, you definitely should work on adding in random notes from the E minor pentatonic scale between those chords like I have written on the PDF that you'll see. We have a riff of whatever you want to do, and then go into the chord. One, two, three, four, and... Or whatever you want to do. And that's the great thing about blues, of course. It's all about improvisation. So I hope you like this video. Get that PDF, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.